Белые ботинки, брюки, клеш, а папа не по наследству финский нож, кепка в клетку, галстук как
self-sustainable. So, as confusing as it was this introduction, I hope I raised some, some doubts and some, some, uh, some ideas. Uh, feel free to interrupt, but I would like to uh, show you perhaps the video no, that was running. Federico, do you think... Uh, yeah, when you want. We can uh, show... Yeah, where was it? Ah, I have to realize it's not a double screen. This is a work in progress. So, in the end, it will become a micro documentary. Just after we've seen massive problems arise from all these IoT botnets, 
it is time to release the first that you can run it for any purpose that you wish. You can study it in software, you can study it in software and you can distribute it. But you can also modify it and then distribute it your own purpose. And if you buy a download, then we support the further development. I guess this is going to look now, so uh, yeah, you can know where the... Uh, so this was uh, a little bit of a first cut of the interviews that we have done. We are struggling to make it uh, uh, still a documentary, no? So uh, also the, the, the documentation of the event today, of the dialogues today, we try to really insert them in. And we are not willing to explode this process into like a global product to pitch to the global public before actually have more iterations within our community. This is what we call community development. First of all, we did a white paper, so we brought down our intention. Instead of you know, closing up in a group of people and making a startup out of it, we instead decided to think slow, think slowly. And we had many ideas uh, what to do with this thing, and actually we cut down most of them. Uh, we, uh, through the process of the last two years, we abandoned a lot of the ideas we had to do, technical ideas. Oops, pardon. I have no idea. And then we, uh, and then we basically uh, decided to make it um, a very simple thing that will not provide you with a Tor anonymizer. It will integrate. There are already products for that. It will not provide you with a torrent downloader. There are already products for that. Uh, it will integrate with all these devices. What DAOs wants to do is something very, very simple that uh, it, it doesn't exist yet, is uh, switch on off switch for your uh, home appliances. So you want to switch an appliance off, then we will go on and refine it. You can switch an appliance off so that it doesn't talk to Google, but it talks to the rest of the world, or it doesn't talk to Microsoft. It doesn't talk to, to Adobe. There are many uses for this sort of, uh, of uh, uh, device, and it's actually uh, wanted by most of the people we talk with. On the other side, the people that are into the Internet of Things that we talk with, it's, it's very fun. Sometimes the reaction, I talk with engineers and I tell them, like, look, we're doing this box, and it's uh, going to switch off the machines. And they're like, why do you do that? <laughs> Some, some data for you can't do that. You know, right? Because they are really like all these protocols and all these business plans based on the fact that they are aggregating all this data. And we are like that. We can do it actually, it works. And we do it because we can. And, uh, and it's not even a business model what we are proposing really. It's just a right, a digital right. The digital rights do not to switch off everything but to be more and more conscious about what you share and how you share it. <coughs> so in a way, uh, the, the data prevention manifesto that Kurt uh, is, is writing and starting to facilitate as a process, it clicks into DAOs. We have to understand that how do we map each other still. DAOs is, uh, is, a, is a still, we are different projects, but we really resonate with each other. And, uh, and I think that more than a marketing campaign, we need an activist campaign to actually understand uh, how important is this project because we don't want to sell it and make a margin of it. We actually want it to be as uh, affordable as possible on every HEMA, uh, nearby condoms possibly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, as much as we go into the scenario of uh, uh, you know, like more and more uh, you know, cyber sex and <laughs> we <to> tell the <laughs> history. <laughs> we have some illustrious theorists for it now. So um, uh, basically that, that is it. I, I will show you one thing which is the, the Kickstarter uh, sort of thing. Can I ask something? Yes, absolutely. Um, since most of internet of things is done by suppliers. Since since most of uh, Internet of Things is done by external suppliers who uh, give you the well, work, you, you buy uh, you buy a fridge, but it comes with all these uh, communication devices. So you buy a television or air conditioner or a car or whatever. 
And they want, they desperately want their data. Actually, it's part of the selling. The part of the product is the data you deliver. So if you, if you start with a switch on and off, and you switch it off, will they not simply cut you off? Okay. Biofix doesn't give any data, so Biofix stops.
now we are acting on layer 2 and layer 3. And to implement this awareness, this control, uh, the lower and the simpler you go, the more power you have. Is somehow uh, uh, the complexity that this system, the smart systems are beating, the antidote is simplicity and going down to the layers and say, okay, I'm just, you know, we are on the uh, MAC address, layer two, and on the IP, TCP IP, on the layer three. And we say, okay, just switch off them. And we don't even look inside the packets. And I think this is, uh, um, this is the move. You know, that, that you say also like you don't need a smart meter to do this. Mm -hmm. We have to claim the fact that we can do still the things we do. We can install a solar panel without having the whole complexity of a system that puts us on the market uh, of uh, energy companies or whatever. You want to say? I just wanted to ask, because I just wanted to ask about the layers and if it was the OSI layers, and if you could just state them, because uh, maybe not everybody knows yeah. Oh, yeah. the layers, uh, that's why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll use our artwork, uh -huh. I guess. Um, is it here? Was it? funny that we use this to show the ISO oscillator. It was presented in the Artistic Research in Tropical. It's talking about something else. It's talking about how distant is the natural world from the technological world. And it tries to create this sort of deterritorialization of terms to make you uh, understand how far we are, but also how close we are in perception of space. So let's say um, the layers that we are uh, working on is the remediation and ground cover <laughs> and the pioneering and cycling the herbaceous layer so uh, which in the ISO OSI is the data link and the path determination so um, well one could say we are also dealing with the transport but we are definitely not dealing with the session and interest communication nor the, the, the presentation nor the application so DAOs is this way, compatible with any appliance that is in your home. It doesn't need even to be compatible because every appliance that goes online talks uh, TCP IP. So we block that. That way, uh, other protocols that are dealing with the, with the smaller, uh, um, smaller areas, they still need to be uh, tunneled to TCP IP. So they need to get into your, your, uh, your router. And uh, that, that is the point of control that we tap into. And um, it is an interesting operation in, in a time in which uh, I hear uh, from, uh, from people that are uh, buying new devices and the device comes with an app. You install the app on your phone and what this app does is learns your Wi-Fi password from your phone, communicates it to the object yeah. and this way the object which has no keyboard gets online on your Wi-Fi and starts connecting home. Mm -hmm. So the act of giving your device access to your home yeah. network is not even declared. It's installed an app, you know, and people are installing apps. Like this app trace is one of the biggest uh, shilling campaigns that we can, we can, we can see happening today. Yeah. Is uh, uh, websites that function as websites. They could continue function as websites they ask you to install an app. In the moment in which you install an app, the app has access to your contacts, if it's declared so. Uh, it could be a condition for this device to work. So then you have to give the app access to your contacts, to your phone calls, to everything uh, that it asks for. And then uh, you can use the service. Like if you install the Twitter app, uh, you will have that app accessing all your contacts. If you use Twitter from a website uh, without installing the app, you have already the value proposition of Twitter, you can use it, but you don't have this, this sort of invasive access. And all these uh, uh, um, 
a sort of consens consensual digital intercourse situations are without any option for prevention. There is no one offering you a condom in that situation. So that is, yes. Um, uh, there is one, a couple of things that are, I find very sexy. Well, first of all, of course, the reclaiming aspect. Um, the thing is that I'm also very curious of what kind of data they're getting from me. So when you say we don't look into, into the packets, I can see your point, but I'd love to look into those packets. So there's also this aspect, which I think it's uh, one of the things that strikes me as, 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 as good in this project is the awareness factor. So the fact that for anyone can become more visible what's, what's going on. A lot of people don't know that when they install the app, uh, then the app is you know, talk, uh, talking home. So that's one aspect. But the other aspect is also how deep, how far these companies are going. And that's an aspect that is politically, to me, extremely relevant. Not so much for, for myself or for the people here, because most of the people here, I guess, know how to protect themselves. They regularly go to HEMA in that uh, condom row. But most of the people I know just buy Vaseline instead of condoms. <laughs> so they basically facilitate this whole thing. So there's, uh, you know, there's two aspects to it that, I, that I find fascinating. One is definitely this thing that it, it's neutral, it doesn't look in, in, inside the packets. But on the other hand, that's something I would really be interested in. So, you know, to, to, to bear it, make it even more evident yeah. to more, you know. We have it running here. The, the network that is uh, running uh, on this, uh, on this uh, space, in this space, is DAOs. And uh, yeah, this is the sort of visualization we, we, we give. It has a limit, as you said. We don't look into the, the semantics. Right. Um, but uh, we look only in the DNS queries. So here you have, if you connect with your phone, you will start seeing yourself. And you will start seeing the connections that you do. Mm -hmm. uh, to where? Like to which uh, sort of websites? And they are grouped by .com, .net, .nl, uh, and the, 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 there's a particular group that is what we call the corporate web, mm -hmm. where everything ends. Uh, this is the limit of it. Right. And uh, to do packet inspection, it would put us in the same position as those that violate your privacy. No, no, of course. Can I add up something to this? Because I had a similar question, but because this reminds me of Collusion, which is this um, plugin that also shows you which websites you're connected with when browsing. Um, but I think even, maybe even without going deeper into this information, um, it is possible to make maybe some examples, right? If you, for instance, visit this and this and this website, you're profiled as this and this user. Because without it, it's more, you know, it's a fascinating network, but then I think the challenge is to clear up why, why does it matter, you know? From what moment does such a data bundle matter? Yeah. Um, Careful there. Yes. I'm Fred. I've been doing with Johnny. We've been uh, thinking about the user cases and uh, interface design, etc. And I thought that's a very nice question, so I'd like to uh, answer something. The fact is that we have been uh, digging through many uh, user cases that come from, uh, from our yeah, own experience. Uh, we thought about, for example, in a house, uh, we have a small child. 12, and I'd like to teach her, uh, I mean, to be aware of what the dangers that are on the internet, etc. without spying on her. It would be rather easy to block her or to spy on her. And uh, I 
would not be preaching, I mean, would not be doing what I preach, in the sense that I would force myself to, to spy on her or to block her, to be the, to be the fascist in the situation. Therefore, uh, I mean, I th we, we thought, well, but if I can sense somehow what type of, uh, uh, what type of uh, traffic we are generating, then I can open a discussion. So I could say, all right, but you know, you've been uh, uh, on YouTube two hours today, right? It's a little bit too much. What shall we talk about? So um, this was one of the, of the particular scenario we were thinking of, but there are many others. You don't really need to um, get into the semantics and to, to spy on the other person, but just to be aware of their use. Um, while at the same time you need for the uh, devices that connect automatically, you need some ways to be much more firm with the device. Because it's very easy to, we have uh, analyzed many cases of uh, very dangerous behavior. Like for example, uh, Samsung uh, te televisions that are always listen. They always listen to what's being spoken in the in the room to recognize some ultrasound yeah. patterns to send home what kind of television you're watching. Yeah. But at the same time, they keep uh, an audio channel always up open that can be very dangerous. Many other devices do the same. Um, we found out uh, well that it was on the internet in many in many examples of you know sex toys that call home. Um, <laughs> and you, you also have to yeah yeah it's true. Uh, it's intelligent sex toy with uh, with uh, with uh, the interface on your phone, so you can use it in interaction with uh, with uh, somebody remotely to enhance stuff. And uh, at the same time, he was coming home, and all the data was uh, in some cloud the computer somewhere. And also the other way around, because they might be making a mistake. And when you have an appliance like a washing machine attached to remote control, mm -hmm. you can imagine a washing machine that resonates how much damage can make in your house, mm -hmm. or um, uh, simply a device that can overheat and take fire. So. A lot of these bad design, kind, bad, badly designed kind of devices are have an actual, uh, because they work not only in a sort of virtual space that is your privacy, but also in the real space of your home, they have uh, lots of strings attached. Um, so I can imagine scenarios in which uh, you can find uh, the DAO's device can get from the internet like an antivirus kind of thing can get the new awareness plugin that recognizes a certain type of very dangerous uh, behavior of new kind of uh, things. And at the same time, uh, tells me, hey, by the way, your neighbor just found out that this kind of thing is happening. Maybe you want to check. So we, we made, um, in the beginning of the process, we made a uh, uh, collection quite extensive of uh, user scenarios uh, and it's open. Uh, I'd like love uh, to, to get more. For many types of different interaction that actually uh, can be dealt with not being on the contact level but just on the meta contact. So DNS and as you bring to awareness what the device are doing, you should bring into conversation what is your use of the internet is inside your community instead of having a censorship approach. I mean, that was the, the idea. Yeah, the operation that we declared by saying uh, at the very beginning of the white paper, demilitarizing network language was not only removing words, it's becoming not only removing words as firewalls, as uh, uh, defense and shield and so on and so forth, but also trying to envision a level in which privacy does not mean this sociopathic vision of uh, the state spying on you so that you should isolate yourself and build a complete uh, defense from all the other world, but that you should ally with those closer to you to share a space of intimacy to defend each other, which is what we are losing to the global narrative of fear that even Snowden is part of. By revealing us that we were spied by the NSA, he is like making us complete individualistic uh, fear uh, uh, units that are we are not even able to trust each other. 
So as much as you give your keys to your neighbor that you trust because you might lose them one day, uh, then uh, you will also ask you know, the other people like, what do you think about my, my boyfriend or my girlfriend? Or, I don't know, like, there is an intimate space that you share with those that you trust and we want to have that into the, 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 the sort of network of defense. Yeah, please. privacy research, I had a question. Um, so I I see that awareness is at the center of what you're doing, and that's great. I think that's absolutely necessary, especially as soon as we deal with things that are not so clear into what type of data is transferred. However, um, research on other types of things, such as social media and mobile, stuff like that, tells me that sometimes awareness is not enough, meaning that people tend to get cynical very quickly. I was thinking if, uh, actually I was wondering whether you had thought about that and were thinking of how to defeat that, because I think that's, that might as well be the case. People get really lazy very, very, very fast. So. Yeah, it's, it's a very complex field, that of social media. We are contemplating um, DAOs to evolve at, uh, at the next iteration as a OAuth uh, authentication like uh, one, um, how is it called, the, the one that's single, single, single sign on, thank you, yes. SSO. So we are envisioning, uh, actually, we still have to do a lot more research on that to understand what we mean, but ideally your single sign on home would make much more sense than your single sign on in the hands of a cloud computer, in the hands of a corporation. So ideally, uh, that is what we see, like the single sign-on, the place where your keys are, are home. And then when you sign on with your identity into a, a, a social media, then it's not with the Facebook account, it's with your home account. That is a server running on your home machine. And that is one approach that we, we want to have with, with this sphere. There is a lot more to research actually, also to have uh, there, therefore, the possibility to share the access no? uh, for, for the same reasons of awareness, of shared awareness with your family, with your friends, with your collective, uh, to share uh, in different ways the access to these sort of sign-ons. But that is speculation, let's say, now. Uh, we definitely want to go into the direction of the single sign-on in the future. And, uh, thanks, and, uh, thanks. Um, so I'm, uh, my name is Dennis, I'm a, as Italian, I'm a visual storyteller. So I work on film and photography. So I really like what she said about the awareness because I'm all the time thinking about that. And if I see what you're working on, uh, I think it would be very interesting to uh, provide a sense of need in what you're gonna do with the crowdfunding. And I would like to take uh, a minute to record an image of an artwork, I think, I don't remember if it was uh, Vito Conci or Marina Abramovic, I think Marina. And at the Venice Biennale, she made this kind of uh, space that was getting, uh, it was kind of glass walls, a space you, you had to walk. And it was getting uh, uh, smaller and smaller and smaller. On a certain point, you could only go through like on your side and at both sides, there were two naked people. So in the end, you had to pass through and face. Yeah, it's Marina Brown. Yeah. It's Marina Brown. Yeah. So, so I think uh, let's keep focus because it's such a crowdfunding debate. It's amazing to have some good words for you experts. Uh, but how do we explain this to people? How do we create a sense of me? And how do we make it visible? where we are going to and how, and, and how you want uh, to protect the people, how do you invite them to protect themselves. Let's keep our focus on the storytelling. Let's make only you. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. uh, yeah. Towards uh, the end of the Second World War, uh, Adorno and Horkheimer, they wrote this uh, book, uh, Dialectics of Enlightenment, Especially for Horkheimer, uh, this idea uh, became very, very important for him. 
the verwaltete the, Welt, the, the administrative world. And uh, he, he wrote a lot about it. Uh, it's not so much, in it, but it, it's, it's still very powerful for me um, uh, because, yeah, that's basically what we're talking here about procedures of administration that we don't see and of course uh, you know at least in, in, in their time it was uh, it was big uh, bureaucracies uh, and of course then in the 70s 80s um, yeah it all became self-administration right and uh, we're kind of still there now it, it all comes from from inside the house we are we are producing those data they're not produced somewhere else about us no uh, it's this the act of self-administration let's say and now comes DAOs, and it, it's kind of at the end of that process the process uh, in which uh, let's say in the Foucauldian way there's this self-administration or administration of the self but then uh, technologically uh, speaking what I'm uh, really concerned about is uh, you know, how can we dis disassemble or dismantle this process of self-administration? Because, in a way, the, and we know that, that the idea of the big brother, etc., that image, uh, it doesn't work, no? because it's not coming from outside. In the end, that's also the, the question of the, of the awareness and the responsibility and of the cynicism this is it comes back to that question right people feel that uh, in the end uh, it's themselves who uh, who are uh, producing all this stuff and they're uh, complicit right so the big political let's say aesthetic and ethical um, yeah challenge of that is to deal with that in one way or another i find uh, and the question is really a collective one uh, what are the ways out of this well the interesting thing about what Phil just said was that it was so political and so deeply apolitical at the same time your uh, your thing is exactly right how to get this awareness through well, it's, very, it's quite simple actually, it's impossible. And it's impossible because it's not, it's not to the individual, yeah. not to the collective of individuals to do this. It's a political question. And the political choice that has been made, or rather, that, that choice was, had always been made, but it succeeded in the last 20 years, was to deliver the population to the corporations, to the corporate world. And the corporate world has managed to completely uh, 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 how you call it, sterilize the political power, which actually is, has become indistinguishable from the corporate power. So what we have is, in fact, a constitutional problem. In Actually, in the absence of the constitution, as population, you are no longer protected. And there is only one thing that can protect you. That is the public power. Call it government, call it state, and then get in trouble with anarchists, I understand that. But there is something of the collective that must exercise power in the name of the collective and have the power to enforce that. And this is simply absent at the moment. And as long as this will not be established, restored or established in a new form, I'm sorry to say, we are all talking in the void. To add to that also, and just to go back to what uh, Fiat said, it is not true that we produce this administration. The administration doesn't need to be produced, I would say. It's not inherent in the use of anything that a certain data set needs to be there at all. If you look at other uh, things that send information around in the world, like plants or microbes or fungi exchanging with completely different creatures that aren't even part of their same kingdom, they, uh, you know, there's, there's different ways of communicating different things. It can be very minimal and very meaningful. And I would argue just, when, I love the way you said it, I don't mean to criticize that, but I, I would argue that we don't, that there's, no, there's no true administration that actually needs to be done. We created it. Uh, products create the need uh, for 
this it's built into the product, it, but it doesn't need to be. Yeah. I don't know, maybe you want to reply to all this. <laughs> Uh, I would like just to add because I totally agree with this trend about reflection, about uh, awareness, and um, uh, I think that uh, the 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 key maybe is to uh, reflect about also other words that can go together with awareness. And I was thinking that uh, one of the points that I was confronting is about caring. Like, it's not just a problem of awareness, let's be honest, because there is also a trend where we live, we are in the age of the aquarium of uh, Facebook, we are in the age where actually people are looking to pop up, to show up daily data where they want to uh, be in the window and I think that speaking about privacy is also about caring because um, I, I say this and then I will explain why because I think that it's really interesting to speak in terms of prevention for a campaign because you could also propose a campaign about protect data let's say then uh, like what I, I would like to share is the point that most of the people it's not just out of awareness of what is going on, but also they kind of reply to you, you know why? I don't care because you don't have nothing to hide. But this is a problem because if you think that nowadays speaking in terms of privacy means that we are uh, speaking in terms that we have to hide something or not, like uh, this is already another step. I don't know if I was enough clear, you know? So I think that um, when we we, are, we were speaking about awareness, it's kind of that awareness is one of the tools, but then there is also other tools that I, I, I still don't know how to verbalize all, but I would like to suggest maybe another one is caring about this. And I think that when we do a general campaign about prevention, also this is another point, because there is also people that are aware about this, but actually they reply to you, I don't care. And also this is a problem because we are in this trend uh, in social media and not just you notes know, in social media that is a little bit, let's say, weird, that is not totally um, in light. Perhaps, uh, perhaps we should reuse this uh, uh, because we are building the interface, no? which gives you the list of uh, uh, things on the, mm -hmm. on the network. We should really not use the word admin for the button, admin the thing, to care. Yes, yes. We are really breaking uh, out of the box uh, with this uh, discussion. I, I really enjoyed it, so I thank you everyone for, for the... Uh, is there any other intervention on this? Well, uh, I, I wanted to just say something to what she said, which, is, which I think is very interesting. I think most people don't care or say they don't care because it's too difficult to care. Once caring, it's easier. And this is why DAOs is so sexy, because it makes caring easier to then carry out. I care and I, leave, I spend my days in frustrations, in frustration, because I care, but what can I do? And I'm still, I like, consider myself a semi-aware citizen, so I think most people don't care because I think, well, what, what should I do? The, the interface just for the location services of telephones is so complicated, you know, when, when I'm using the app all the time, you know, it's already confusing. And the more we get deep into it, it's, it and the more it gets confusing. So I think one of the keys to turn that care into actually people caring is to make things simple and, you know, and visible. Yeah, uh, you call me, I mean, I feel very much attached to your point. Uh, the lead idea for DAOs was uh, how can I put the key on my door? So once I put the key on my door, I, I mean, it's obvious the government can always ask me and come in. It's in his right, but I mean, I have a key, so I'm reclaiming that this space can be closed, right? 
does uh, we saw it a little bit like that. Then, of course, it has to be um, simple, as simple as possible, to to um, put in the in the human space what's happening in the network space. And that's a problem of design. A typical problem of design. I mean, how you visualize uh, something complex like a like a malware that is acting on the phone of your neighbor when you offer him a coffee and you are asking him also to make you offer him a Wi-Fi at the same time. You no, know, he sits down with his Wi-Fi and he has malware on the phone. I mean, you don't usually realize that unless it's getting also in your system. In this way, without I should be able to say, hey, my friend, look, there is something strange on the phone. Now I stop it for you. Then if you want, I, we can look at it together, what's wrong. So it's very much for us, it was very much to try to design situations in which everything that leaks now out without us having any issue becomes a phenomenon in the human space in which we still have all the old-fashioned rules of politeness that can apply. And for me, those rules are very good uh, design leads because, you know, samurais used to have very complex rules uh, to sit and sit and watch one each other because they had very long swords with them. <laughs> so in Japanese is reishi uh, ki, uh, so it's the art of being polite. But this art of being polite, I had uh, something behind me. We're going around with very big swords. Um, I, being an anarchist, I believe that you have an agency with other people when you have a little bit of, you know, uh, possibilities to deal. And then courtesy comes out in a very natural fashion. That's what I want to say. So for us in the design, also the whole structure of keeping the interface open that can leak into any type of uh, uh, device that you have at home. We, we have the doubt box, it's an important part of its design. It's going to send signals that can be used by any device you have at home. You can put it on Arduino listening, a web browser can listen, a thing can listen that gives more or less light to a plant according to how much YouTube you watch stuff like that. You can decide and design it your own way. So uh, this is to, let's say, in the design process, allow people to um, experiment and, 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 of course, feedback what are their ideas on how this connected world should, should materialize in the material world. So that's a bit the thread we kept in the design, even of the iteration one of, uh, of uh, the DAO's box to see how it materializes. There are no pressing, yeah, there is a, another intervention. If there are no pressing interventions, I would say we can have a little break. Um, it is very interesting for me uh, that everyone in the room know each other. So please introduce to each other. I will try to introduce some people. I'm very, very happy to see Sergio Messina coming uh, uh, to, to this uh, evening. He is one of the most inspiring persons for uh, most of the things I have read and done in the space of digital culture and provoking and underground. And, uh, well, uh, you're modest, but you've been giving lectures at Art Ar Electronica and so on and so forth. And, uh, or Nino, that is visiting us from uh, Sicily, is uh, one of the members of the Flicknet. Uh, as uh, obviously you look at it and understand. Also <laughs> <laughs> Alessandro, Alessandro, a new member of the Freaknet. Which is uh, our uh, hub in Sicily, in Palazzola Freire, where we have a museum of uh, insect uh, computers, working computers, in Musa Informatica Funzionante. And uh, I think it's very uh, important for us to uh, basically meet each other with new and, uh, and the old people of our network, Patrice, that I didn't expect it to be anymore in Amsterdam, so let's see, see you here. Hank from the VAG that has followed the project uh, uh, since the very beginning and actually has thought of, has built those boxes without calling them, without branding them for half of his life. So basically, <laughs> you know, you have, uh, uh, you have a very nice, beautiful entourage here. So let's have some drinks and uh, we, we'll come back and we'll start 
with, uh, with uh, CAT and with the Data Prevention Manifesto, the first iteration of the Data Prevention Manifesto, so there will be also performance, we will read the first, probably the Rico will read the manifesto, uh, or, or someone with a mask, like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I have a, a mask, it's right here. Yes. <laughs> Something to discuss around the table that I want to propose. I can order. Sure. It's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, this um, what we thought would be the campaign. This is on uh, Produzione dal Basso, which is for Affinity the platform uh, we, we, we choose. It's a platform in Italy for crowdfunding uh, that has uh, always belonged to the movement. They do the crowdfunding for the partisan. Uh, uh, movement in Italy, they are like they started with punk bands. So it's like let's say it's between home, it's a small uh, uh, company of uh, uh, comrades uh, in, in Milan, and we are pitching there to do like uh, S card installer downloads, t shirts, hoodies, and a DAO's box that we are settling around the 76, uh, 77 euros, which is really price cost for a box and everything. How much it. money are you looking? Uh, we are we are looking at around uh, twenty thousand uh, euros Kickstarter, so nothing really like a huge and big. We will give uh, workshops for the makers. And is that money mainly for PR and marketing, so that it can really be launched? Uh, that yes, yeah. because uh, basically we don't have we will not make any profit out of these uh, costs, these no. prices. It's going to, to pay the, the very production of it. And so there is no margin, we are not uh, making a margin of profit, then uh, of course it wouldn't be a profitable operation if it wouldn't be that this still gives a marketing, gives a drive outside of our context, in the context of people that just want to buy a box and, uh, and participate to a crowdfunding, which is probably very different from who we are also around here. And we want to reach this sort of audience uh, still with the contents that we have, which shouldn't be just like, oh my god, be, be aware that uh, people are spying on you, but it should have all the articulation, all the complexity that we are putting on the table now, like a, a very, uh, I think, educative, very good complexity on the topic that we are trying to explore. So, uh, if you are here, you are called not to buy a box, uh, buy a beta, we can talk about this uh, uh, later, of course, you have access to the thing, but really to contribute to articulate further this complexity and this narrative and build the new narratives as Dennis uh, reminds us like to, uh, to have a narrative. Uh, so thank you very much. There are beers, wines, tea and happiness. And, uh, yeah, let's have a, a break. Yeah? Thank you.